Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to talk about how validation works in Marshmallow. So in the previous video I introduced you to the library and in this video I want to show you a little bit about validation. So the first thing you should know about validation is why you would do it is because validation in Marshmallow is a lot easier than validation that you write by hand. So you'll save a lot of time by creating a schema that has all of your validation information in it as opposed to writing it by hand with like a bunch of if statements. The second thing that you should know is that validation only occurs on deserialization. So this is when you take in raw data and convert it to a form in your program like an object like we did in the previous video. So this is done because validating input is obviously more important than validating output and it's just a lot faster for Marshmallow to only focus on validating input. So when you use the uh, dot load here, when you deserialize something, that's when the validation occurs. It doesn't occur when you dump. So now let's get into the examples. So what we want to start by doing is creating a new field. So we'll have an email field. So this is going to be fields.email. And later I'll show you all the fields that you can use. And what I'll do is I will add that to the class. So email here. And then self.email equals email. And the next thing I want to do is I want to add a question to get the email information. So email equals uh, input, what is your email? And let's try running this. So I'll start with uh, valid data and then I'll use invalid data. So the valid data is my name, Anthony, and then a valid email address, which is anthony at prettyprinted.com. And we see all that information there and we get no errors. So now if I add an error, so I'll run the script again. So Anthony 30 and then for the email, I'll just put some random characters. This time we get this trace back and we see it raised a validation error exception. So what I need to do is I need to import a validation error from Marshmallow. And what I'll do is I'll put a try except block around this code here after the input. So try. And then we're going to accept that validation error uh, as error. And what we'll do is we'll print out uh, error and we'll see what it looks like. So let's try this again. So my name, Anthony, age 30. And then I'll put in some random information there. And now we see it prints email and then not a valid email address. So because I'm using this try accept block, it hits the accept when the load raises the validation error. And then it prints the error object that is returned by the validation error. And in addition to error, I can also show the valid data. So I can do error.validData, not date, but data. And if I run this again, put Anthony age 30 and then my email will be uh, well an invalid email this time we see email is not a valid email address again but we also see the valid data so we see name and age without the email because that is valid so if you want to do something with that information you can next I'll show you about adding a validation inside of the field here so what I'll do is I'll create a new field called location and this will be fields string. And inside of string, I will use required equals true. So this is a very simple validator and I'm pretty sure you can figure out what this does. So I won't update the class to use this. Instead, I'll just use the script like I have before. So this time I'll put in all valid data, but I still get an error. So this time it says location and then missing data for required field. And then it gives me all the valid fields that I entered uh, before. So the reason why it's showing this is because I have location in the schema, but I'm not asking for the location with the input and passing it to schema.load. So location is never there, but because it's required, it's throwing that validation error and I can see that location is the field that's missing. And by simply reading that message, I know what to do. So that is how you use the very simple validation. Um, if you want to do more complicated validation, we can do a custom function. So for a custom function validator, what we'll do is we'll create a function. So I'll call this uh, validate age. 
is going to take in an age. And I'll say this, if age is less than, let's say 20, I'll return false. So if your validator returns false or raises an error, then we know the validation has failed. So to add this onto age, I simply type validate as the parameter name, and I pass the name of my function. So validate age, just like that. I don't need to pass the parameter here, just the name of the function. And now if I try running my program again, we'll see uh, my name is Anthony. This time for the age, I'll put 10. I'll put a valid email address. And now we see age has an invalid value and then location is still missing. And then I still see the uh, valid data here for email and name. So if I wanna change this error message, instead of having invalid value, I can have something else. I just need to raise a validation error. So raise validation error, and I'll say something like, the age is too young. And then if I run this again, put age 10, put a valid email address. Now we see age, the age is too young instead of invalid values. So if you wanna have a message here, then raise a validation error. If you don't really care about the message, then you can simply return false. So if you think you'll be using the same validation in multiple schemas, then it's nice to have a function. But if it's only going to be in one schema, you can have it as a method and you can use a decorator to declare which field it's for. So what I'll do is I'll move this into the schema and just indent it correctly. And then I need to import a validator. So the name of the validator is validates, so plural, and I'll decorate this, so validates, and then pass in a string with the name of the field, age. And then here, because this is a method, it will take in self first, and then the validation should work the same. And actually I need to remove this one because I'm no longer using the function. So let's try that again. So name is Anthony, age 10, and then my email is that. And now we see the age is too young here. And just to prove that this is working, let's say the age is too old, and we'll change the age to be greater than 200. So now my name is Anthony, 400 years old, and then my email, and we see the age is too old. So if you wanna have a method that only applies to the schema that you're working in, you can use the validates decorator and then just pass in the name of the field here. And then of course you have to use self here and then the age, or you can just put whatever you want like value uh, that will get passed from the actual field into the validation method, and then you can do whatever you want here to check if it's valid or not. And then finally, you have more complicated validators from Marshmallow itself. So what I'll do is I'll import uh, validate, just like that. So we have validates with an S and then just validate. And what I can do is I can put something like length on my name. So validate equals, so this is the same as before where we use the function, but instead of passing a custom function, we'll pass one from Marshmallow. So I'll validate dot length, and inside of length, I'll say the max length of the name can be five characters. So now if I run this, my name is Anthony, which is seven characters. I'll put in a valid age this time. And we see the name is longer than maximum length five. And then location is still messed up. And we see email and age are valid data. So if I put in a name that's a lot shorter, like ant, and then uh, 30 for the age, and then email. Now we'll see location is missing. So missing data for required field. And then the valid data shows there. So if we change this to false, so we can see this working correctly. We'll have my name, age, email, and the name is still too long. I just forgot about that. So ant, and then anthony at prettyprinted.com. And now it doesn't print out any errors. It just prints out our dictionary there because I am dumping it and printing the result there. So all the validation works uh, pretty much the same. Here 
are some of the fields. So each field has like inherent validation to it. So for example, the email field has uh, validation that confirms that it's an email and the number fields have validation that confirm they're a number and so on. So the documentation is a little hard to read. So I'm just searching for class uh, marshmallow.fields. And we will see the fields that are available. So we have raw, nested, mapping, uh, dictionary, lists, strings, uh, tuples, uh, UIDs, numbers, integers, decimals, booleans, floats, date times, naive date time, uh, aware date time, time, date, time delta, email, method, function, constant, and pluck. So those are all the options. I'll put a link to this in the description below so you can see the fields. And obviously if you just read the description, you'll understand what they're for. And then here is another part of the documentation. These are the validators that are built in. So I use length already, which is here, but you also have contains only uh, email again, which is really the same as the email field. We have equal, none of, one of, predicate, range, uh, regular expressions and URL. So I'll post a link to this in the description as well so you can look at the validators that are available to you. So that's all I wanted to cover in this video for validation. If you have any questions on how this works, feel free to leave a comment down below. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please subscribe. So thank you for watching and I will talk to you next time.